Good morning, lovelies. Today we're going to be talking about my top 10 least favorite Disney tropes. All the themes, patterns, and subliminal messages that we really should stop telling our kids. Just a thought. But before we get started, remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos on science fiction, fantasy, and horror through a feminist lens. And if you'd like to directly support this channel, join us on Patreon. You get early access to these videos, the DZA Discord server, and other bonus content. That link is in the description. Number one, insta-love. Yes, I know that this is the whole point of like 90% of all Disney movies, but I still hate it. I talked about my beef with this trope specifically in my least favorite romance tropes video. Suffice to say, no one falls in genuine love at first sight. It just doesn't happen. I am fully with Elsa on this one. Number two, everyone's straight. I would be a lot more lenient about the insta-love thing if there was at least a little gay in there. The day Disney makes a movie centered around a gay couple, I will cry happy tears and break into a happy dance. As it is, it is extremely heteronormative, and so far only a handful of very minor characters have been confirmed gay or lesbian, and a lot of villains. Speaking of which, number three, queer coded villains. Queer coding is when characters are given physical or behavioral characteristics that are associated with the LGBTQIA plus community, even if that character's sexual orientation is never specified. So for example, Governor Radcliffe from Pocahontas is a man who embodies a lot of feminine qualities. He wears bows in his hair, he is obsessed with gold and glitter, he shies away from physical labor, all that good girly stuff. It's never specified that he's gay but come on. An even better example would be Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Her designs are literally based off of the drag queen named Divine. Queer coding in and of itself is, is not really that bad, and making a queer villain is also not a bad thing. The issue is when Every single queer coded character in any given story or franchise is literally vilified. Especially in children's movies, which teach and impact our views on right and wrong, good and evil from a very young age. Queer coding only villains links the queer community with villainy. It's homophobic. Stop it, Disney. Number four, the rampant sexism. This is more of an old classic Disney problem than a recent thing, but for a long time, princesses weren't allowed to be heroes. The men got to do all the fun stuff like actually fight the villain. This is largely because of... Number five, passive heroines. I'd say Sleeping Beauty is the biggest offender here, but a lot of other classic Disney princesses are very passive. They don't do anything! If you take away their songs and fancy outfits, they contribute next to nothing in their own story. You might as well replace them with a magic item or a big bag of money. Disney has mostly gotten away from this one. However, these movies are still showed to young girls today. And as for the boys... Number six, problematic heroes. Peter Pan treats his lost boys, Wendy and Tinkerbell, like garbage. Prince Charming could not remember the face, voice, or any other feature of the supposed love of his life. And Prince Florian from Snow White apparently has a necrophilia kink. And he's 31. Snow White is 14. Actually, the age gap between a lot of couples in Disney films is gross. Even as recent as Tangled, Flynn Rider is 26 to Rapunzel's 18. Ooh. Number seven, almost everyone's white. Disney has made more strides to be inclusive, but the franchise is still very, very white. Except for the villains. Even when the movie is, say, all about animals, the villains will be the only characters with recognizably foreign or urban accents. Remember how we talked about linking villainy with the queer community a few tropes ago? Same basic principle, except for racism. It's great. Real great, Disney. Number eight, the super thin body standards. Though Disney has been pushing for more diversity in terms of race and even queer representation in recent years, every heroic character has the same body type. Thin hourglass for women, triangular musculature for men. Unless you're comic relief, an old woman, and or a villain. These are supposed to be the most beautiful people in fiction, and the fact that it excludes people with different body types is... troubling. 
Number nine, every woman has the same face. We've all noticed this, especially with the age of 3D animation. Apparently, every single woman of later Disney films is descended from the same big-eyed, small-nosed, baby-faced ancestor. This has even sparked fan theories that they are all related. The theory falls apart when you realize that all of the men get to have different facial features. And number 10, historical inaccuracy. Pocahontas was kidnapped from her people at age 14, forced to marry an Englishman old enough to be her father, and died of disease hundreds of miles away from her home and family. Hercules was the product of rape by Zeus on a mortal woman and was temporarily driven insane by Hera, causing him to murder his wife Megara and their children. I get that you can't really include that stuff in a children's movie, but you don't have to water it down that Badly. There's also the debate about whether or not the movie Pocahontas does more harm than good, considering what happened to the Native Americans. I've heard criticism, largely from the Native American community, varying from it's as if the movie Titanic ended right before the ship sank, to Disney might as well make a movie about Anne Frank and a Nazi falling in love. Yeah, it was never my favorite movie. Personally, I think that there are more responsible ways to introduce kids to Native American culture and history. And if they really wanted to tell the story of a white guy and a Native girl falling in love and postponing the total genocide of her people, they could have done it with totally fictional characters and not hijacked the truly tragic tale of a real-life person. Pocahontas, or rather her actual name, Matoaka, deserved better. Those are the worst Disney tropes. Please tell me yours in the comments. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you can, join us on Patreon. Link in the description. Bye lovelies!